What's up guys, Sheldon back with another review and today we are looking at the super action statue Jolene Cujo from JoJo's Desire Adventure Part 6, uh, Stone Ocean. Can't see the lettering but it is purple, I guess it's just shiny there. Uh, a long awaited one, one that many people have asked for and apparently there are no videos of, so it's kind of cool. I'm glad that I can bring you a review of this finally if there isn't one. Uh, okay. Let's see here, let's take a look at the box. So we have this nice kind of green and turquoise uh, gradient here uh, with the harlequin pattern, which is pretty standard. You have a visualization of the uh, accessories, accessories right here. Uh, an alternate head, display stand. Uh, we have some box art, and then we have a box window and my reflection, I guess. And we have more box art here. Uh, so something interesting though, is that Jolene's last name is spelled with a, a C instead of a K, and it has an H at the end, which is kind of strange considering that it, she and Jotaro have the same last name. Uh, so I wonder what that's about. Okay, regardless of that though, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the accessories. Okay, so here's just a visual of the accessories that she comes with. Um, so you see, actually, aside from her fist hands uh, that come on the figure itself, uh, the hands on both sides aren't the same, which is kind of cool. So she has unique hands from both sides. Uh, she has an alternate head, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. And she comes with this alternate hand, which has these strings coming out of her fingers and these extra effect parts that come in this nice little clamshell. Uh, so let's take a closer look at each of these hands though. Okay, so as mentioned before, Jolene does come with a pair of fists. Uh, and I really like the attention to detail. They even painted the, uh, the, the green nail polish on her, which is fantastic. She also comes with a pair of uh, relaxed, straight-fingered hands, and like we mentioned before, uh, aside from the fists, the hands actually aren't the same on both sides. So this one, the fingers are spread out a little bit more, this one is more like chopping together, and again, uh, the nails are painted on pretty nicely over here. Something that I do want to mention, though, is that the shading on my hands are different. You can probably see that this side is lighter than this side, and that's kind of weird. I think overall, the arms are different shades, slightly, I don't know, the shading is just different on both sides, and that's just something that I wanted to point out. Jolene also comes with these two kind of pointing hands over here, and so since I normally show you back and front on each side, since they're different, I'll just give a rotate over here. So this one's kind of more like bang bang shooting uh, hand, which is kind of cool, and this one is a relaxed pointing hand over here, kind of like a delicate point. And Jolene also comes with this hand over here. So she does have more right hands than left hands, so it'll be mostly just one side now. And I think this one has a bunch of, has a bunch of panel lining on it. I think that that's supposed to simulate uh, when her body starts to unravel for her stand. And finally for our hands, she also comes with the, this right hand with these uh, strings coming out of her fingertips over here. Let me give you a nice little 360 so you can see, so that's kind of cool. They are kind of delicate though, but they are soft and they do move, they do move around. We'll take a closer look at this. Uh, you know what, how about right now? Uh, so most of these strings are, yeah, soft plastic. They seem pretty delicate, so you do want to be careful, but it is pretty nicely done over here. Um, and I did forget to mention, by the way, uh, in terms of the hand, I don't know, the panel lining hand is a cool addition. Uh, some of it, the paint looks a bit unclean. It's like my little cousin or something went over it and just like drew on the hand with some sharpie. So it, it could be better in my opinion. Uh, is it sculpted? It is sculpted though, which is nice. Uh, okay, and then finally let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, little string parts over here though. Alright, uh, and then Jolene comes with this really strange string hand. Uh, so let me just kind of pull out here because it is a pretty large accessory. Um, so part of her power is being able to like unravel her body, blah, body, body into string and whatnot. And so I guess this is an effect part that you know, like simulates that. Um, I don't think you can really attach anything here. I mean, you can kind of like fit the the hands at the end, even though it's not really meant to do that. So you can make it do some weird looking stuff. I can't. Hopefully, I can get that to balance. So it does work in a way, but you can see it doesn't actually hold it. It's mostly just like you know you can do it if you want to. Um, so she does come with that, and this is just an alternate hand, so as you can see over here. Uh, and then she also comes with a couple of more of these, uh, with alternate sizes for the holes here. So for this one, the hole is a bit larger. This one lets you, um, put it into, like, this double finger hand over here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then for this piece, uh, a slightly shorter one, lets you fit it onto... Uh, just a single finger, 
just like that. So you see it's a tiny hole, you just put it in here. Not too, com too complicated. Uh, and I believe on top of putting it on the finger, you can probably put it onto the string itself too. If you wanna like extend it to make it look a bit longer. So let me see. So you know, like stuff like this if you want, or maybe you can probably put it onto uh, this hand right here. Just put it onto maybe the middle string to, to extend it and what have you. Um, not really sure what it's for, because it, I could probably look at the instruction manual, but uh, you can probably check it out. Uh, and that pretty much does it for these string accessories. Um, so I do want to say, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the string being flesh colored. It looks really gross. I don't know, it's just, I believe in the manga the string should be gray. And if I show you stone free here, like, Stone Free's body is made up of silver string. Uh, oops, zoomed in by accident. Uh, and so I was expecting the string accessories to be silver as well. And if you see on the hand with the uh, with the effect where she's turning her body in the string, it's black too. So, I don't know. The fact that these are flesh-colored, it's just... Uh, I don't like it. They're okay, though. I'm glad that we have the parts. I just wish they were a different color. Um, okay, that pretty much does it for these strings, and then finally though, let's take a look at the alternate head, which is the angry face. It's not quite yelling, in fact, it's uh, it's more like a raised eyebrow face, and let me see if I can pull the light in so it's easier to see. Uh, but compare <coughs> her regular face to her, her angry face here, and it's uh, not too drastic. The mouth is slightly larger, it's not yelling wide open. But maybe the eyebrows are a little bit more arched. Well, maybe not even that. Uh, but the eyes do a little bit more intense. Uh, and the mouth is open just a bit where you can see your teeth. But ultimately, it's still kind of relaxed. Uh, and since we're on here, though, let's take a look at the head sculpt. So overall, the likeness is pretty good. And I think the eyes are painted pretty cleanly. And I love, love, love the green lipstick. It looks so nice. Uh, yeah, that's something I really like about the later arcs is just the color schemes for characters get a little crazier so I, I love like the unnatural lips and hair um, that being said though the hair itself is done very well and sculpted very well really nice detail got her little bun sculpted here um, and this ponytail i believe it's a soft plastic uh, but i can tell it's probably going to get in the way in articulation but overall yeah really nice head sculpt over here uh, okay that does it for the accessories let's go ahead and take a look at jolene herself. Okay, so Jolene stands about, let's see, uh, a little under six inches, which comes out to be about, hmm, I would say a little under 15 and a half centimeters, maybe just about 15 centimeters. And then here she is, you saw it just at first, here she is next to Stone Free, and they scale pretty well. Stone Free is kind of, you know, the legs are bent, not completely straight up, so Stone Free is a little taller over here. Um, so let's see, who else do I have? Uh, here is Jolene next to Trish. Uh, and let's see, how do they compare? So roughly the same height. I'm actually kind of surprised. In fact, Trish looks bigger. Huh, I guess I've never noticed that. Maybe her head's bigger, or maybe just it's because her hair. Uh, but you know, roughly the same size. And then here, Jolene is next to Anna Sui, who's coming up eventually. So Anna Sui is a little taller as expected. Uh, again, this character design a little, little skinnier compared to the earlier JoJo's like Jotar and whatnot. So you know, a pretty decent height. So a pretty good scale. He is again bent over a little bit, but a little taller. So which is nice. Um, and then here is Jolene next to SH Fig Arts. Freddie Mercury. Uh, so if you own figure arts, you'll roughly know the scale. So again, his legs are spread out. So if you have him standing up, it looks like they're actually going to be pretty close in height. Yep. So there you go. Uh, all right. So that does it for the size comparison. And in fact, while we're on here, let's compare Trish and uh, Jolene. Okay. So like I mentioned before, uh, Trish was the first female super action statue. And I think Jolene improves on the sculpt um, in, a, in a pretty good way. Um, for the elbows for sure though. Um, so like the elbows, they have a double ball joint though, so you'll, you'll have better range of motion. Uh, and then for the uh, thighs, they're gonna be a thighs full. So actually let me do the articulation first and then we can talk about that. Uh, okay, so for the head, pretty standard. It's on that hinged ball joint over here. Uh, so you do, do get some pretty good range of motion and one second, it looks kind of dark. 
Okay, never mind. Um, so far the head is on that ball hinged, um, so just the hinge itself, you can see it's actually not bad going forward. And then back, it does hinder again thanks to the, uh, the hair coming down. Uh, and then on the neck, you do have a little bit of a swivel right here. So it is there, and then combined, here it is going forward, actually pretty good. Here it is going back, and it's all right. And you do get a bit of gapping though, which does suck. Uh, you get the full rotation, and then you get a little bit of like side to side over here. Uh, and then for the shoulders, it is pegged into the torso and into the bicep. So you actually get a decent range of motion, better than horizontal, or better than like a, I guess this this is 90, so a little bit better than 90. Um, and then you do get the full rotation over here. Uh, something that's strange, at least to me, is like, so this, this side looks pretty natural. Um, I think the peg is a little too high on my right side, so it doesn't go quite as far, and it makes the arm look a bit unnatural. So that does kind of suck. I have some... Uh, Heard some comments about the quality control of Super Action Statue sometimes, and yeah, that's true. I, I, I do agree. Sometimes it does kind of suck. It's not a huge thing, but uh, it's just something to, to take note of, though. What a bummer. Uh, okay, enough of that, though. Uh, and then for the shoulder, as you can see, it's you don't have a traditional bicep swivel, but again, it is begged, the begged, pegged into the bicep, so you, you get it right here, though. Uh, so it does work. And then for the elbows, you have the double ball joint, or ball peg. So you get some pretty good range of motion, if I recall, if I could get or not to punch herself. Uh, you get better than 90 degrees, uh, which is pretty good. And it is pegged into the forearm as well, so you technically can swivel it at the top and the bottom, but the elbow pads can get in the way, so I'm not going to do it. And for the wrist, pretty standard joint. It's that hinged ball over here, ball peg. So you can rotate it over here, rotate, uh, and you can hinge it. Uh, and as a note, the sculpt on the other side is different. So in fact, you actually get a little bit different articulation over here. So you get a slightly better <laughs> uh, range of motion on this side. And then for the wrist, uh, you get way better because there's just nothing blocking it. All right, so you see, rotation and hinge. All right, for the ab, uh, you just have these single ball joint though. So here it is crunching forward going back, so not that much all by itself. You do get some decent lean and uh, rotation over here. And then for the waist, kind of the same problem with Trish, I think, actually, because it's like wider than it is like, I don't know, this way. Uh, you, you can't actually turn that much. So it is there, technically, you can see, but you're not going to get that far thanks to the sculpt. And then when combined, though, let's see, here it is going forward, not that much, honestly. And then here it is going back, which always tends to be better, which is interesting. Uh, okay, and then for the hips, you have this, uh, you know, traditional bulge socket. You just uh, you move this out of the way, but here it is going out, not that far, kind of to be expected. Uh, and then going forward, though, you get pretty good range of motion um, all the way out. And then for the knees, well, before I do the knees, you'd see that you have a thigh cut here, so you have a thigh swivel, which is nice. And then for the knees, double jointed, pretty good range of motion over here. Uh, and then for the ankle, you do have this much going back, this much going forward, actually not that much. Uh, and then for the toe hinge, you know, it's there. And then you do have an ankle rocker, you just gotta play with it a little bit, but let me see how far I can do it. Mm, okay, with a little bit of work, it's like slightly there, but you can probably get a bit more. Um, and then in terms of the articulation going back though, uh, Jolene does have this kind of, I don't know what this is, it's not really a dress, but it does get in the way of her legs going back. And in fact, sometimes it does get in the way of it going out too, because you see it kind of like pushes in where her uh, legs normally are. Uh, so that does it for the articulation though. Um, so yeah, compared to Trish though, it, it does make a pretty good number of improvements, uh, particularly the elbows, which was like a huge problem that I had, so that's it for Trish, and then for Jolene, it's like all the way up here, which is way better. And again, like I mentioned before, there's no thigh swivel here, and there's a thigh swivel here. Um, yeah. So let's talk paint and sculpt, though. Um, so, I really like the design of, like, 
Stone Ocean and the later JoJo's because it gets a little crazier, the, the colors get a little wackier, and I really like this figure overall in terms of how it looks and how it's painted and the color scheme. So like the blue and green are pretty nice, and the tattoo on her arm is actually done very cleanly. Uh, so let me see if I can zoom in on that for you though. Yeah, so it's done really well. Um, and so the butterfly on her chest is also done really well. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, a lot of small detail over here. And the sculpt overall, it's really nice. It's got like this webbing uh, all throughout her uh, tank top and on her pants. And also in the leg, these kind of pieces over here, uh, they are separate pieces that are glued on, uh, but they don't feel like they're going to fall off, so it's very nice. And they are hard plastic, so overall the look of Jolene is pretty cool. Pretty flamboyant, so I can see how it's not for everybody. And again, the, the belt, as you can see, green, purple, got that uh, belly belly button piercing and that star. And in fact, I forgot to mention, she has the Joe Star birthmark on her shoulder. So really, really great level of attention, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and I do like how these are painted instead of separate pieces. Um, so, you know, they're supposed to like be straps onto the outfit, so that works really well. Uh, I do have a gripe though, which is this piece over here. So it's it's kind of mixed feelings. It's nice that they gave you like a complicated, well, it, it's nice that they gave you a cool outfit, but like it just does get in the way, honestly. Like if it weren't here, the, this figure would be just as good. You could probably take it off. I don't want to mess with it, but it does get in the way. So I'm, I don't know, like coattails are kind of cool in characters. They look nice. But in terms of articulation, they do get in the way. But overall, it's done nicely. I mean, there's nice shading. It's painted cleanly. It's a nice matte finish. And on the inside, it's a slightly different shade, too. It's like this uh, kind of light purple. So overall, it looks really good. Um, in terms of articulation, it's not bad. Uh, and I do like how the sculpt is asymmetrical in places, which is really nice. I really like it that it's unique. Um, in terms of appearance, the wrist does look kind of ugly, though, as you can see. I don't know, there's just, because the ball is so obvious, so that is something to be wary of. But overall, I do like the figure a lot, and actually, like, this bothers me a lot more than it should. It's just, like, the main thing that kind of, like, is on my mind right now. Like, the articulation overall is good. It's, it's like, really good range of motion, but just makes it hard to handle. Um, so do I recommend it? Yeah, of course. It's, uh, I think Jolene is one of the better figures in terms of articulation and appearance. Um, so if you're a fan of the character, go ahead and pick it up. And if you are not a fan of Jojo and are into some interesting figures, I would still recommend it. It's a pretty nice figure. It tends to be a little popular, so it might be difficult to find. But if you can find it, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, okay, well, that pretty much does it for this review, then. Uh, I'm going to put her in some poses at the end. Uh, but if you enjoyed, feel free to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more videos. Um, Alright, guys, thanks for watching.